Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Isaac Martinez. I'm the priest in charge here at Trinity Parish. Um, and on behalf of Trinity, despite the sad reason for our gathering, it is nonetheless um, a delight to welcome you to Trinity this morning. Um, in the Episcopal Church, we believe that at death, life is only changed, not ended. Um, and so we thank you for joining us as we um, bid Jane Marks um, a fond farewell um, and a welcome into the heavenly realm. Everything that you need for our service this morning can be found in your bulletins, um, except for some of your hymns, which are clearly marked and can be found in the red hymnals in the pew backs in front of you. Um, we've also experienced some unfortunate uh, weather-related phenomenon in our parish house, which um, our bathrooms are located in. Um, if you do need the bathrooms, please um, use the door at the rear of the sanctuary up a short flight of stairs to your right um, and take care um, when moving through um, that part of the building. So um, without further ado, we'll continue with our service. Thank you. Please stand in body or spirit as you are able. I am resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though he die. And everyone who has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. After my awaking, he will raise me up, and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see and my eyes behold him, who is my friend and not a stranger. For none of us has life in himself, and none becomes his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord. And if we die, we die in the Lord. And so if we die, we die in the Lord. So then whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light, grant that your servant Jane, being raised with him, may know the strength of his presence and rejoice in his eternal glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Most merciful God, whose wisdom is beyond our understanding, deal graciously with Jane's family and friends in their grief. Surround them with your love, that they may not be overwhelmed by their loss, but have confidence in your goodness and strength to meet the days to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. Reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, 25, 6 through 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. 
He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Has selected uh, by Grandma Jane herself. I am standing upon the seashore. A ship at my side spreads her white sails to the morning breeze and starts for the blue ocean. She is an object of beauty and strength. I stand and watch her until at length she hangs like a speck of white cloud just where the sea and sky come to mingle with each other. And then someone at my side says, there, she is gone. Gone where? Gone from my sight, that is all. She is just as large and mast and hull and spar as when she left my side. And she is just as able to bear her load of living freight to her destined port. Her diminished size is in me, not in her. And just at the moment when someone at my side says, there, she is gone. There are other eyes watching her coming and voices are ready to take up that glad shout. Here, she comes.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, and on behalf of my family, we thank you all for being here. I'm looking around and seeing many faces of people who love my mother, and families representing people who loved my mother, so I thank you very much for being here. We're grateful for you taking the time to be with us. Being here at Trinity, Trinity reminds me of the many Sundays my family came to church together here, sitting in the back right, always, surrounded by my parents' friends and their growing families. Mom taught Sunday school downstairs, and she and I were in the choir together, something she continued for many, many years. My dad was an usher at Catholic Church. Our parents gave us a perfect foundation to live. Mom was all the slots Typical mom fashion, they were listed in a folder marked Richard for the day. Very glad that she's re in heaven and reunited, reunited with her loved ones. She spoke often in the last years of wanting to be in heaven with them. Rich remembers her saying recently, when I die, I want you to tell the Lord, thank you. Which she says was followed by, this is tough, or something along those lines. That shows her profound faith not understanding what she meant, said, well, you're on the top floor. And mom pointed vigorously to the ceiling, and Rich and I told her, yep. Mom was blessed with a very long life. I was very brave as her body slowed down and her mother The last three years at Sunrise Assisted Living were peaceful, and she was very content. The staff there were wonderful to her, and she told us many times they were like family to her. We were very blessed to have a mom who put family first. Whatever was needed, she was ready to help each of us. When we moved to Maple Road, mom met all the neighbors and quickly became the street's social director. When she moved across the street, next to her dear friend Mal Bates, they became quite the team. Mom loved entertaining and planned parties for every conceivable occasion, <laughs> as well as progressive dinners and backyard barbecues. We always had family dinners, and every Sunday afternoon was reserved for Sunday dinner with the grandmothers. She was a great cook, and we still have her Toll House cookies and clam dip when we get together for family gatherings. Our dad, Bill, was Mom's high school sweetheart. They were married 27 years before he passed at the untimely age of 55. Mom cared for him well as he went through many years of surgeries. At that time, she was working at the Melrose Junior High as the secretary to the assistant principal, Peter Garapé. They loved her too, and she did her job well and excelled at it. They loved her so much, they threw her three going away parties when she left.
After dad's death, mom spent a lot of time down the Cape with her dear friend Christine, often visited me in Virginia, and took some fun trips with Billy, including a wedding in England and a cruise on the Bermuda Star. Even though she swore she'd never marry again, she found love a second time with the man who sat in front of us down there in the back, Ralph Marks. After Ralph passed almost two years ago, Mom loved to tell their story. She would say, I was outside and I looked up and I saw Ralph at the end of the driveway. He told her he was just out for a walk, which she doubted since his house was on the opposite side of the city. Finally, at the end of the conversation, he asked her out to dinner. She, and, she wasn't sure at first, but he was persistent and they married six months later. <clears throat> she and Ralph spent many summers at Moody Beach and made annual trips to Maryland and Virginia visiting me and Ralph's son, Peter. Okay, but I'd be remiss if I didn't mention our mother's ability to be both kind and charming as well as fresh and sassy. She maintained her quick wit and great sense of humor to the end. At the hospitals and rehabs these last couple of months, she entertained doctors, nurses, and therapists and made them smile. We knew she was having a good day when she was asked, how are you feeling? And she promptly answered, with my hands. She caught them off guard and her little side smile showed she enjoyed that. If the hospital staff asked if she wanted something to eat, she'd ask for lobster. And if they asked if she wanted something to drink, she would ask for wine. Mom left us an example of how to live. She was kind to everyone she met, and she loved her family deeply. She enjoyed and nurtured many close friendships and served her church and her community. But she was happiest when she was with her family. The lines of the final hymn which she chose and which we will sing are how I think of her now. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy will fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and proclaim, my God, how great thou art. In the name of the one holy and living God, amen. Thank you, Judy, for those beautiful words that captured beautiful memories of your mom. To you, to Rich, to Billy and all your family, receive the gratitude of a very thankful parish that was so blessed by your mom's faithful presence among us for so many years and in so many ways. It is a joy and an honor to preach today in remembrance of a Christian life well lived I didn't have the opportunity to know or sadly even meet Jane, but from what her children and so many of you have told me about her, I can confidently say she was quite a woman. It is an impossible task to sum up nearly 98 years in a few short minutes. So now I invite you all to also bring to mind all of your wonderful memories of Jane as mom, as grandma, aunt, cousin, friend. And together we shall send her off to her soul's next party in the heavenly realm. Because that is what I took away from the stories that I heard. Jane was the life of the party, as Judy said. I'm told that her home on Maple Street in Malrose was also called Party Central and well visited by the kids in the neighborhood. She had a habit of making deep and lasting friendships wherever she went, including here at Trinity Parish. She was so well loved from her 20 plus years working at Malrose Junior High School that, as Judy said, they threw three retirement parties for her. And even at the end, in the midst of her dementia, she grew to love many of her caretakers and was loved in return. Thankfully, such a big and generous heart was tempered by her sense of humor. I heard the word feisty thrown around in the remembrances of her. 
And in these stories, I hear echoes of Isaiah's prophecies from our first reading. Jane perceived that God has indeed set a long table for all of us, has made an abundant feast, and has invited everyone to the party. And she was sure going to eat her fill, be glad, and rejoice in it. But it wasn't just her warmth and wit that I find meaningful in the stories of Jane's life. She certainly knew her share of suffering, like losing her first husband much too young and having to continue raising and supporting a family. Yet she was a woman who drew immense joy and deep meaning from taking care of the people she loved. And so it was, I think, in her love and service, especially to her family, where her identity as a Christian most clearly shone. And I know that that love has been multiplied many times over in this church this morning, in Jane's children and grandchildren, great-grandchildren, nieces, nephews, and many friends. The love this remarkable woman had will live on and on. In our gospel reading this morning, Jesus is preparing his own beloved friends, his disciples, for his own death and departure from them. He tells them, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. Or, in other words, Jesus has gone on ahead of us to Party Central, and he promises that we are heading there too. And for us Christians, the entirety of why Jesus matters is because of his love for us, love so deep and so powerful that it would overcome death itself. The deep and powerful love that Jane had, that she nurtured in her family, and that she shared right until the end, is to me that Jesus kind of love. It is the kind of love that I trust has brought Jane home to the God who made her, just as Jesus promised it would. And it is the kind of love that I trust will bring all of us home as well. So rest well, dear Jane, with all the saints who have entered into God's embrace before you, and until we meet each other in the new Jerusalem. Amen. Please stand for the prayers of the people as you are able. For our sister Jane, let us pray to the Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Jane and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Yes, Lord. You raised the dead to life. Give life to our sister eternally. Yes, Lord. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring to our sister the joys of heaven. Yes, Lord. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our sister. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Father of all, we pray to you for Jane and for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May her soul and the souls of all the departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. And now, beloved, may the peace of the risen Lord be always with you. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace.
peace again and welcome again to Trinity. You may be seated for a few quick announcements. Um, uh, Jane um, really wanted for there to be a service of Holy Communion, so that is um, what is next after um, these announcements. Um, everyone is welcome um, to Christ's table in the Episcopal Church, and I'll say more about that. Um, uh, immediately after um, the service this morning, um, we'll be going to Wyoming Cemetery um, for the interment. And then after that, um, I think right after that, correct me if I'm wrong, Rich, um, at Rising Eagle Public House at 505 Main Street in Malrose, um, we'll be having um, a festive gathering um, to remember Jane um, and, and comfort her family um, there after the interment um, immediately following. Great, and all are welcome to that as well, which assures me. So we hope that you can join us there. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Now please rise in body or spirit as you are able. We remember that this is God's table and not our own. Everyone is welcome and everyone is invited to this table. If you wish to encounter the real presence of God in Christ at this holy meal, for whatever reason you prefer to receive neither the bread nor the wine, feel free to approach the altar rail as well and simply cross your arms across your chest to receive a blessing instead. But wherever you are on your spiritual journey with or towards God, know that you are welcome and you are invited to this table. And now God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who rose victorious from the dead and comforts us with the blessed hope of everlasting life. For to your faithful people, O Lord, life changed, not ended. And when our mortal body lies in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place eternal in the heavens. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy 
holy and gracious God, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen to sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and creator of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to cruel suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
now please rise once more in body or spirit as you are able. And a quick note that for our closing hymn, uh, hymn 287 for all the saints, we will only be doing verses one through four when the time comes. Together, let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you that in your great love, you have fed us with the spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ and have given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament may be to us a comfort in affliction and a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where there is no death, neither sorrow nor crying, but the fullness of joy with all your saints through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Jane. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. And now, beloved, receive this blessing. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make the journey with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.